How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. And with a steam engine built today, we're going to try to finish up these two flywheels. And I'll show you the problems uh, that I encountered with them. I'm starting on the flywheels and, you know, the whole crankshaft actually for the engines. And let's see here. What, what else? Uh, here's a little, here's a little aluminum one. I have it all kind of actually kind of together a little bit. And of course, uh, this one here, we're still a little bit to go. I'm going to shorten this uh, hub on this one also a little bit. But that's all kind of just sitting here together a little bit. And here's the, of course, the top for the other other engine all ready to kind of be put together, really. I've uh, two flywheels to do here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center. One side of this hub is basically goes down so it's flush with the side of the flywheel. Um, both of these are basically made the same. And I can hold this in the lathe. And I'm going to mark a center point on here on the hub. And I'm going to then align the chuck so I'm on the center of the hub here. And then I will machine, I'll drill, ream the, the bore. That's a quarter inch. I'll turn the outside of this. I want to leave this all the casting face. I, I, I like to leave all that if I can. I already checked in the lathe and they look pretty good. They're pretty parallel. So I shouldn't have to touch this up, but uh, we'll see how, after we get it in the lathe. And then I'll take it off and I'm build, I'll build an arbor so that fits nice and snug. And we'll turn it around and put it on the arbor and we'll just, we'll, we'll cut this uh, hub basically, face that off basically. And I have two little crankshafts already uh, just, just cut and faced. I, I have flats to mill on those. So I'm just gonna, gonna hold this up here and just scribe. And when you do this, uh, just so you know, always do three lines uh, if you can. Uh, try to always do three. Two lines uh, don't necessarily get you what you need. And that looks pretty good. Change of plans. I could not get this held sufficiently in a four jaw or the six jaw because of the draft. It was just too much. Uh, so we're going to punch a hole in it, ream it right here. So I got my scriber in there real quick and uh, got it all aligned over the center. There we go. What do you have? I'm not even, uh, not too centered on this side. What I discovered was the patterns, and you can see it here in this one, the patterns became offset between the cope and drag, and that made the hubs offset. These have draft on them, of course, so these are really hard to hold in the lathe. I discovered that they were offset that much when I decided to drill through the center of it. I was gonna put it on an arbor like a lot of people do and all that, but, well, so one side was lined up and then one side wasn't. And, or, you know, one side was pretty much in the center, but the other side wasn't. It was offset quite a bit. I, I really wanted this to be in the as close to the center of the hub as I could get, and so I could have as much material as I could left over on the hub and be able to still clean up the whole flywheel. What I ended up doing is I plugged these holes. I ran an end mill down, 3/8 end mill down in, and centered that. 
so it was pretty much in the pretty good close in the center but wiped out the original quarter inch hole I put in and I did it on both sides and then I inserted a couple pieces of 3 8 aluminum in there with Loctite and with a light press fit and that fixed the holes and then I center drilled in the center of the hub by actually measuring and getting it as close as I could to the center and center drilled it. And then I mounted this between centers on the way. And turned one side, turned the outside all together. Then I just flipped it around and cleaned up the side and the hub on the other side. So we're up to the point on this one uh, to fold it back in the lathe on machine surface now and center drill this right through the center. So it'll come out, it should come out really well. And uh, so that's where we are on this one. Now on the lathe, I'm set up for the, my centers already. So I want to continue on to getting this one to the same stage as the, uh, to the same stage as this one is. Uh, so I've marked off, I've scribed a lot of, several lines you can see here to approximate the center of the hub using a center finding square, right? And I did it both sides, center punched them, and now we'll go with a little mill, we'll center drill this, we'll throw it in the lathe between centers and get this one uh, to the same point that the aluminum one is, up to the same stay, up to the same point. And then uh, we'll continue on and get them all both finished up here at the same time. So that's the plan. So if you're not going to the bash, don't miss out on the black book. Uh, they're going to have a special edition of the black book at the bash. So you can get with a special cover for the bash and everything. And uh, it's going to be a large print version. This is a small one. And they, these, these books are really very, very good. Uh, uh, Rain uh, puts out a fantastic product here. The, the pages themselves are very easy to read. I love their color combination. And they're made of a paper and coated so that they don't really get dirty and you can uh, and clean them. It's made to last a long time. It's, it's wire bound so the book lays flat. It doesn't bind up and make it hard to read. It makes, lays flat to the pages you go to. And it has a, just a ton of information. Uh, you know, for real technical stuff, yeah, the Machinery's Handbook is, is, is probably the go-to book. But this has probably 90% of the information you may need during the day. Uh, here, this is tapers, um, common screwdrivers, common screws, information about belt, belt drives, gear teeth, uh, spur gearing, you know, just uh, inserts. Uh, th this is one of the best uh, books I, or pocket reference or quick reference I've seen uh, as far as covering what inserts are. And how to, how to how to read them, how to know what they are, TNMG, right? And understand what the identification means, see? It, it and the and the grades even, um, what they're good for, what material to use them on. And it oh, here's a nice comparison when they're using the Iscar, Kenamel, Mitsubishi, Newcomer, Sandvik, Seiko, you know, Sumitomo. And they've compared them uh, of their grades and stuff, which is kind of confu very confusing because everybody uses a different way of grading their carbide. Uh, even some various tool cutting materials and, and their position in the in toughness to hardness chart. That's interesting. I didn't really realize that was in there. But anyway, what I'm getting at is this is a fantastic book, well worth, well worth the money to have in your shop. And they, they make several of them. This is the engineer's one, the fasteners one, and they also make a metric uh, metric one and an electrical one, I think. So, But uh, you should check out uh, Engineer's Black Book. You can just do a search on Google. And uh, Pat and Rain just do a wonderful job. They're, they're two brothers. It's www.engineersblackbook.com. Uh, and just a just a fantastic fantastic reference for especially here in the shop. And I use this. It sits here on my lives on this bench right here on the lathe, 
and in this box, index, whole thing, and math. Uh, th th all about threads. You can see threads are kind of dirty. I use this one a lot. And uh, taps. So anyway, check this out. Like I said, come to the Bash. Get a special edition book at the Bash. And they're putting out a large print version. And uh, that'll be a really, really good deal for everybody. Anyway, let's go back to the flywheels. Let's get them done. All right, I have the setting on parallels. I made sure the faces are clean so that it sets fairly flat. So it's flat on the parallels in here and lightly clamped just so it won't rock and move and I literally I have a center punch mark and I am very good on it but what I did is I actually eyeballed that measuring it all in all four directions and centered it up that way because this is more of a visual thing but I want it to be close to being visually in the center too so and I'm, I'm confirming my center punch mark. Now I'll just set with a center drill this. Now I don't want that too deep uh, because I'm only putting in a quarter inch shaft, right? So I don't want this too deep, even though I will machine it a little bit, but I want enough to hold it. Uh, that should do it. And we'll flip it over and do the same thing. There you go. Both sides are done. And uh, we'll uh, go to the other side. Now we can put this in the lathe. Okay, I've attached my dog right there and uh, secured it onto the one side. And now we'll put it in the lathe. I've had to uh, shim the dog here. I use a little piece of copper in here because of the draft angle. So is enough to really cause this not to grab very good and wants to slip too much. So I shimmed it a little bit here. It's wonderful.
Nice. Came out really nice. All right, we're turned around and we'll, we'll get this side turned. Almost like gold. Don't we wish? On to the next step. We've got it mounted in here. Align the chuck. Less than just a few tenths. Uh, within a few tenths, I should say. So we're going to face this off. And then we're going to make a measurement to see how much we need to take off the end of this. And then we'll end up drawing that. We have a little bit of a gap back here about 19,000, so I have a, I'm just using a feeler gauge to fill that gap. Okay, so. So I have 50, a little over 50,000 there to take off. A little polish on there and we'll flip it over and machine the rest of it off. Now this side we're going to take off this all the way so uh, it's flush with the side of the flywheel. Now on this side, we're going to have a cam that mounts on, that sits against here, I should say. It will be pinned to it. I'll just chamfer in this a little bit to make it look really good there. Kind of like what I did on the other one. Just chamfer that up a little bit. A little, little bump. 
off on it, shine it up. Looks pretty good. That oil puts a little stain on there. I'll have to make sure I get that off. We're going to edge find each side, find center, and then we'll just come in a reasonable distance so we clear that to drill it. I just use a DRO, uh, half function, uh, check, test, take a position on each side and tell it to divide it in half, basically. There we go. This is now complete. Call this done.